Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a corner doll display for Julie. So if you wanna set her up on the shelf, she can have a cool little backdrop to go with her. You might have seen this display on American Girl's Facebook page. They've done a few live videos and this doll display has been shown and I've gotten a lot of requests for it, so I thought it'd be really fun to make. Now since this display is made out of foam board and not wood, I am using Foamworks tools like this cutting board right here to give me a straight edge and it's really easy for measuring large pieces of foam board. Now I'm gonna start by cutting the two walls that join together. For the walls, I am using the half inch thick foam board. It's really thick and sturdy and I love the half inch foam board, especially for larger projects for the dolls. It's very durable and it's a great substitute for wood if you don't wanna use power tools and get involved with wood cutting. Now to cut through the foam board, I am using the Foamworks straight cutter and it hooks right in here into the railing and it gives me a straight cut. So I have the perfect measurement, very easy, a really nice guide. I like to run the blade twice just to be sure it went all the way through. There is a setting on the cutter and you have a clean cut edge for your foam board. Perfect. It's not crooked or curved or jagged edges at all. Now these back walls are 25 inches and since my foam board is 30 inches long, I'm gonna run this back through the board and I'm gonna take off the five extra inches. So it's easier to measure the five that I need to cut off rather than pushing it all the way through to 25. You see this just connects right in here into the guardrail and it glides so easily and you just push down the blade. So the blade isn't sticking out when it's not in use. So I'll just push the foam board, match it up to the five inch and cut through. Again, I like to run my blade through twice just to make sure I cut all the way through and I put enough pressure on the blade when I was pushing it through. And now you have a scrap piece of foam board and I'll put that to the side for later. But do you see how perfect this cut is? And this half inch foam board is amazing. It lasts a really long time. So now that you have your two back walls, you can paint them whatever color you want. I prefer to spray paint foam board and light even coats because it doesn't warp the foam board and you don't get any paintbrush streaks on it. Now I'm cutting the window piece out of foam board, but instead of using the thick half inch, I'm using the regular 3 16 inch foam board. Now because I was cutting half inch foam board, I do need to adjust my blade depth because I don't want it to go too deep and ruin my cutting board. So on the bottom, you can see how deep your blade is sitting and on the back, you can adjust it. So you just turn it in the back and you can see the blade adjusting right here on the bottom. So I'm gonna go all the way down to 3 16 my blade is now ready for the thinner foam board and I can cut out my window pieces. Here's another closer look just so you can see how easy it is to get the exact measurements when using this Foamworks tool. For the window, I'm setting it to six and five eighths inches. So just stick it right there. Use my straight edge cutter and I have a perfect cut, the perfect size. There's one more cut that I wanna show you. It's for the baseboards and the crown molding, and I want the edge to be at a slant. So for that effect, that look, I'm gonna be using the Foamworks V-Groove Cutter, and you can have two blades in this cutter at a time, but for what I'm doing, I only need one side to cut the foam board. So just like the straight cutter, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna put it on my guardrail, I'm gonna slice through the foam board, but instead of giving me a straight cut, it is giving me a cut at an angle. So I'm just gonna cut the first piece of foam board so I have my angle piece, and then I'm gonna measure how big I need it for my baseboards. Now my baseboards are two inches, so I'm gonna measure two inches from the very top of the foam board. And this just gives it a little more detail in your doll work. 
So the baseboards will have a little slant and the crown molding on the top will have a little more detail rather than just being straight pieces of foam board. It's really cool. Now cover your work surface with parchment paper, that way you don't get hot glue on your work surface and it's easy to peel off if anything leaks out. The back wall that's 11 and a half inches will lay flat on your work surface and you're going to apply the hot glue on the raw edge right here. Place it flat on your surface, then take your 12 inch wall and press it right against the hot glue. Hold it into place until the hot glue is dried and you have your corner piece for your doll stand. Now, once it's dried, you can flip it up and you can glue on the back support. This is just to give it extra support on the back since we're not doing a base underneath. So very easy, just apply the hot glue to this piece, stick it on the back to make sure it covers both pieces and you have extra support. Once the back support is on, flip it back down. Now you can take your window piece and glue it directly onto the back wall. I placed it three inches down from the top. Now you can hot glue on your baseboards. Make sure you line them up evenly to the edge. Repeat this process for your crown molding at the top. Make sure that you line them up evenly with the edge and they're not sitting crooked before the hot glue dries. Now you can glue together your window box valance. Again, do this on a surface that is covered with parchment or wax paper so you don't ruin your surface and it's easy to peel off any excess hot glue. Now for the window beads, I am using these extra dress up party necklaces. These are just little party beads and instead of beading my own, this is much simpler. Just cut the necklace so I have a long string of beads and they don't fall off and it's not big and messy and I'm gonna glue them directly onto this window box. Now back here to the corner wall, I left it lying flat so now I can take my window box with the window beads hanging from it and I can glue it directly onto the back wall. It should fit snugly right over the window and you can line it up to the top of the window just to make sure it's even and it's not glued on the back wall crooked. Now that it's dry, you can stand up your corner display and you have these wonderful beads. And to dress up Julie's wall, I'm just going to add some of these 3D flower stickers. And for Julie's adorable giant foot rug, I'm just using a large piece of felt. It is a hot pink. It's not fuzzy, but you can get it fuzzy if you want. I'm using a pink Sharpie to trace out my foot just so it blends in with the felt and it doesn't stand out like a black marker would. Take your time and just draw a giant foot. Once you're happy with the way it looks, you can cut it out. And ta-da, you have a corner doll display. This is perfect if you want to display your dolls and show a little bit of their character in a piece behind them, just like American Girl did in some of their Facebook Live videos. I thought it was really cool to have these little touches surrounding your doll if they're gonna be out on display. So you have a little corner piece for Julie. And what's really cool with this technique and how we made this corner piece is you can extend this and make this a complete corner room by using the same techniques, the same foam board, adding the windows and the baseboards, and it would just be a really cute room for your dolls. Give this video a thumbs up if you think this is a cute way to put your dolls on display, and leave us a comment below telling us what other dolls you wanna see displays for. Don't forget to subscribe and just craft it.